Hello everyone. It is Tuesday, April 28th, and the title of this story is called A Safe Place. Trust in me at all times. Pour out your heart to me, for I am your refuge, your safe place, and your protection. The more you depend on me, the better I can help you. Trust me always in all situations, in joyful and sad times, in times of peace and times of stress. Let those things that stress you out remind you to look for me. Tell yourself the truth about me. Don't listen to the world's lies. Use the words of the Bible to describe me. You are my refuge and my fortress. You are my God and I trust you. I am your refuge, a safe place. Saying these things about me out loud or even singing them will pull you closer to me. Your mind often has several different thoughts going through the day. So instead of just thinking about me, speak to me out loud. This will chase away your distracting thoughts and help you focus on me, the one you trust. I really like this book. Mrs. Kerr bought this for me. Um, I think last year at the Scholastic Book Fair. And it just goes uh, a little story for every day. And it's meant for kids. So I, I really like this book. I know there's some different versions of them. Um, I think our Chloe Y, she has uh, a blue, she has a blue book like that. Um, let me go ahead and pull up our math. Math, 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 math. Okay, so yesterday we did line plots. Look like the number line with the little X's on top. And so today is going to be how do you make a line plot? So yesterday you kind of looked at the line plot and answered questions. And today you're going to make a line plot. So how do you do that? Well, this is one whole example of this page, lesson 11 too. So let's start at the top and read through this. Donovan measures to the nearest foot the distances that he and 14 classmates can jump. He records the data. So remember that is information. So the classmates jump, jumped, and all of these numbers are how many feet they jumped. So this would be like if we took people from our class and they did this. You know, three feet, four feet, six feet, four feet, three feet, five feet, and on and on and on and on. How can Donovan display the data? So the first thing that he does is he makes a tally chart to organize his numbers. So this tally chart at the top, it says jump distances. Here is distance in feet, and we have three, four, five, six. And when I look up here at the numbers, those are the only ones that I see up here, three, four, five, six. If for some reason you had lower, like two, one, one or zero, that could be, that could make your chart um, a little bit different or if it went above seven, but this one doesn't look like it does. Then Donovan takes his information and makes tally marks. So I would then look up here and say, well, how many number threes do I have? Well, I only see two. So that would be two lines. Then I would look for how many fours do I see? And I count five, six, seven. And this is how you would make five. You do one, two, three, four, and you put a slash through it. That gives you five, six, seven. All right, how many fives are there? There are five, so that shows your little bundle here of five. And how many people jumped six feet, one person. So the tallies are helpful for organizing your information. Then Donovan can make his line plot. So it says jump distances for his title, that goes at the top. 
And then the bottom here, this label says, it tells you what the numbers on the line plot mean. So this is distance in feet. That's how far the kids in the class jumped. All right, and then up here, the title, it matches the title in the tally chart, jump distances. Um, the number of X's for each distance match the number of tallies in the tally chart. So we'll talk about that in a second. And then down here, these numbers, the number line includes the numbers from the first column of the tally chart. So remember I said up here, if you had kids that jumped like two feet or one feet, it would make your chart different. So down here, th this chart showing you, it's starting with two. We don't have anything that's starting with two and it goes all the way to eight. But well, we already know that we only had three, four, five, or six. So really your tally chart could just be three through six. It doesn't have to have the seven or eight or the two. I don't really know why the example has that, but it does. So we'll just go with that. But if you had to make your own, you would need those numbers. All right, so why are there two X's above the number three? Well, if I go up here, two people jumped three feet. So I would put two X's, one on top of each other. How many people jumped four feet? Well, remember, this is five and two more is seven. So I make seven X's. How many people jumped five feet? Five, one, two, three, four, five. And how many people jumped six feet? one person. All right, so that's how you get all those little X's there. Ooh, that was a lot of information. Okay, use Donovan's line plot. So you're probably going to have to flip, flip back and forth so you could see his line plot. Um, that's kind of a bad way to have it, but I am not the creator of this book. <laughs> Number one, Donovan measures the jump of another classmate. This student jumped five feet. Describe how Donovan should show this jump on the line plot. Okay, I'm gonna go back. It said somebody jumped five feet. So how would this change our line plot if someone jumped, another person jumped five feet? Think about it for a second. Do you know what the answer is? You just put another X up here above the five. So now you have six people that jumped five feet. So describe how Donovan should show this jump on the line plot. What would I write down here? I would make another X on five feet or something like that in your own words. Oh, number two, another student jumps two feet less than the longest jump. Two feet less than the longest jump. Where should Donovan place an X to show this jump on the line plot? Two feet less than the longest. All right, the longest in feet the person jumped was six. But it says, what is two less? Six minus two, two less. Did you say four? So another person would have jumped four, four feet. So I would have to put another X there. Thought of it should place the X above what number? All right. Hopefully you said four. <laughs> um, I want you to try number three and then and number four is gonna be very tough. So I want you to not do number four. That one's asking you to explain step-by-step step how you make a tally chart and the line plot to show your data. So when you have information, you can make a tally chart to organize your numbers and then you can plot those numbers on the line plot with the number line and the X's above the numbers that it goes on. But I don't want you to have to worry about writing that all out. So skip number four, please.
let's go to more practice. All right, at the top, this one is still jump distances. That's the example. So you don't need to go over that one again. On the bottom, it's asking you to use this information to do a tally chart and to make a line plot. So a farmer records the heights of 14 plants to the nearest inch. And here's all your numbers. So what are you going to do here for three, four, five, and six? This is the height. What are you going to do for the tallies? You're going to count up how many threes you see up here in the numbers, right? And then you're going to make your tally marks. Remember, if you get five, it's one, two, three, four, and a line through it. Okay, so then you're gonna look how many fours are up there, how many fives, how many sixes. Now we have the line plot over here where you're gonna take your information from the tallies and you're gonna put it on the line plot. We have the title plant heights, so we're missing something down here. What's gonna go down here? Hint, 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 hint. We're trying to plot the height. Okay, so then what are you gonna put on these um, lines here? What are you gonna put on those lines there? It goes up to six. You could start at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You could start at two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you could start at zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, wait. <laughs> zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It doesn't matter. You just have to make sure that you're getting these on your plot. Once you have your numbers for height, then you're gonna put the X's. So above three, you're gonna put how many X's you got for three. Above four, how many X's you had for four. Um, above five and above six. So remember, um, it doesn't really matter what numbers you're starting with on the bottom. You just have to make sure that you get three, four, five, and six on there. Don't just put three, four, five, six. Start a few numbers before and then a few numbers after. But it doesn't really um, make that big of a difference there. Same thing here. Library books. Question about the library books. And why is it helpful to make a tally chart before you make a line plot? Why do you think this is helpful before you do that? Well, I think it would be helpful because then you know how many X's you're supposed to put above that number. And then you don't have to go back and count all of these different numbers that you have for your data. So that makes it easier. What's next? Chapter 11, review. Okay. Draw a line to match each need with an action that responds to God's word. All right, so you're gonna, there's five of them. You're gonna draw a line. People are hungry. What do you do? People are thirsty. What would you do? Complete each sentence with the correct word. All right, so we have forever, Jesus, mercy, and word. Now I'm hoping you're gonna do nice handwriting so that I can read your word, it stays on the line, it's not giant and off to the side, right? When you're drawing your lines, you're gonna make sure that I can see what one it's connected to and you're not doing all sorts of squiggles and weird things like that, okay? Uh, on the back, who am I? Write the correct name on each line. So we have Martin DePores. If you don't remember who he is, you might have to look back a page or two in your chapter. We had that yesterday. Mother Cabrini and everybody should know Jesus. And down here at the bottom, the last part,
draw or write about one way you can give loving service as Jesus did. So think about the different works of mercy. Those are different services. So you can um, write a sentence or two or draw a little picture. Uh, you don't have to use colors. You can if you want to. And then your mom or dad are going to take a picture of the front and the back and they can email it to me or they can text it to me on their phone because that's easy. Last but not least, cursive. I went ahead and did an example already so that I don't have to mess with that paper because I seem to have a hard time. Even though I would like to show you how to make the letters, it just always is messy and <laughs> it doesn't always, it doesn't look good to me. So I don't want to um, show it to you that way. It looks, it looks bad actually. So I did an example. So I thought we could work on some Bible verses. Now you did one yesterday. I am a child of God. I am loved. Maybe just practice that on paper. That's fine. Then today I was thinking, oh, wouldn't it be fun if we took, you know, some of these Bible verses that we're going to have this week. And on your paper, I just took white paper because I didn't have any lined paper. You can make like a little book of, um, these are like popular kids um, verses that you would remember from the Bible. And you could make a little book and keep it by your nightstand um, or your desk or something to have to staple it together. So I did my incursive. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. Well, that's really important to remember right now as um, you know, we're, we're still at home and we're not at school. So God is always with us and he is helping to keep us from being afraid of anything. And I just drew a little picture. You don't have to, but I thought it would be nice. And it didn't take me very long to do either. So that is what I'm going to do with my cursive pages this week. That was my one um, I did yesterday. I am a child of God. I am love. And then that's like our little logo for our holy family. So let's just go back up and look at the cursive really quick. This capital T is not connected. You could connect the L in Lord. Okay. Um, and I'm looking at what other capital letters. Got a comma here, capital I, and period at the end. So you can connect the L in Lord or you don't have to. Um, if you didn't want to connect the L and Lord, then it would just be like this. And then you would start, um, you see why I didn't want to do this? Yeah, because I don't want to um, embarrass myself, my cursive. So um, there's, it's not connected. I like it connected. It doesn't matter. Whatever you prefer to do, you'll have develop your own style, um, but you've learned the correct ways to write the letters. So I'm going to stop talking now and let you get started on your work. So have a good day, guys, and I will talk to you later on. Bye.